Hello everybody, welcome back. We are, oh my goodness. <laughs> really? Do you have to walk in right there? What? Do you? Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anyhow, back to what I was saying. <laughs> Hello. We are jumping right back into this declutter I'm doing. So in the last video, I went through my tarot cabinet and broke everything up into categories. Now I'm going to go through one category at a time and go through the decks kind of one by one, but there could be some mixing and matching as I compare some decks that maybe feel similar to me. Anyhow, let's just get right into it. So we're going to start out with the Northern Animal Tarot. I'm going to zoom us out just a bit. The Northern Animal Tarot is one of if not my absolute favorite deck. So this one, I already know, isn't going anywhere, probably ever. I did have the second edition, but I gifted that one to Rachel because I knew she wanted to try it out. And I just wasn't reaching for it over my first edition. As beautiful as the coloring was and all of the updates. I just really was so bonded to this first edition and knew she would love this deck too. And I'm so glad that I gifted it to her because she immediately connected with it as well. So now we both get to enjoy it. But this is my Northern Animal Tarot and this is, this is probably a big statement, but I'm gonna say my favorite deck. So this one fills kind of a lot of roles too. So it's got, you know, the animal energy, but also that storybook feel. I don't use this one in any sort of inner child way. But honestly, I really, I don't do much inner child work, I think, because <laughs> I am generally kind of connected to that childlikeness. I don't often feel that I need to. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of things or um, decks that kind of have that sort of imagery, but really just because that's what I like. Any, anyways. So one that I think kind of fills a similar role is the Forest Envy Tarot. Now this is one that I backed on Kickstarter and I'm so glad I did. I really think this deck is something special comes with the little guidebook. It's all in these really nice pastels, which I love. I love the art style. There's not as many different kinds of animals. This one doesn't feel, while it is a forest deck, I don't know how truly foresty it feels to me. I don't know. I don't know how this one honestly feels. This one feels a bit more, I guess, storybook illustrated to me than the northern animal does which is interesting but I have to admit this is not one that I reach for often I do love it but sometimes I feel like there's a lot going on in the images I guess and they're not always super easy to see because of the muted colors It's just, and it's very interesting. There's a lot going on in each picture, but I feel like they're images that you really have to kind of look at for a bit. And they can be a bit, a bit on the pip side. So again, I have to say this is not really one that I reach for often, but I just, I just like it. <laughs> this is going to be a bit of a challenge, I have to say, because... I really do feel like I have a tendency to hold on to things that I don't necessarily need, which is okay. I mean, my point in this is not to go through and force myself to get rid of things so that I have less. I really, I don't have a problem 
having a lot of decks or anyone having a lot of decks, if that's kind of your preference. I really enjoy having variety. Um, it's very helpful with ADHD. <laughs> having that variety makes it so I don't get bored and I don't lose interest. So that is something I really enjoy, but what I'm looking to avoid is having decks that fill the same role where I'm looking at my tarot cabinet in the morning, knowing the feeling that I want and feeling like I have to choose between multiple decks. That's not really what I'm looking for. So none of these I'm going to get rid of right away. They're going to go in a little timeout, I guess you could say. I think what I'm going to do is any deck that I kind of re am realizing I don't use a lot, I think they're going to go in timeout. And so my options will be the decks that I know I love, I know I use, and we're going to see if I'm missing these decks that get put away. <sighs> so I think, I think this is one that can get put away. I love the images and the colors, but it's just not one that I find myself drawn to use. And look at this silver edging. Oh, it's so pretty. All right. We lingered on that one for a while. <laughs> that is the Forest NB Tarot. And our first time outer. <laughs> All right, let's look at... All right, here we've got the L Goliath Tarot. And this one is very new to me. So, you know, this is going to stay. It's not really gotten any sort of chance. But it's one that I already know... I feel pretty connected to. And it does feel very different from my Northern Animal Tarot. It feels a bit more sh shadowy. It's dark. Well, I do feel like my Northern Animal is kind of an all-rounder. I can use that for any reading because of how connected I feel to it. I do feel like if I was doing shadow work, I would lean more towards this one. Which is definitely a good sign. I feel like it it's going to serve a different purpose for me. So this is the El Goliath Tarot. That one definitely stays. We gotta give that one a fair chance. Alright. My Cat Tarot. This is one that... I know has to stay. I've kind of been going back and forth on it because I don't I don't use it for myself. But Stevie really likes it. <laughs> if you watched my video where she kind of did her own reading, she's so attracted to this deck. Whenever I have it out, she always comes nearby and wants to see it, wants to play with it and touch it. So I kind of feel like this is her deck. And I do, I really do like it. It was my first one. And I, I don't tend to hold on to sentimental value with things like that. So I'm not inclined to keep it just because it was my first deck. But I almost feel like I should put this in the category as with, um, Oh, what was that one called? Oh, I'm gonna blank. The funny one with all the, it's another animal one, but it's the funny snarky one. And it has the Oracle decks. Oh my goodness, I have to go look. The Affirmator's Tarot. <laughs> that one has been entirely claimed by Paul. He doesn't do readings often, but when he does, he, always picks that one to the point where he started referring to it as his deck. He'll say, oh, go get my deck. And so since then, I just, I haven't been able to use it for myself because it just feels like it's his, it's meant for him. And that's sort of how I feel about this tarot as well. It feels very, that looks just like Stevie. Oh my gosh. It feels like it's her tarot deck. So I almost feel like I shouldn't include this <laughs> in like my own personal collection because I've put the affirmators away in a place where Paul knows where it is. He can use it, but it's it's separate from 
my decks because I know it's it's not mine, you know? It was, but <laughs> now it isn't, so I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with that one. I mean, it's certainly not going away because that would be very rude of me to get rid of Stevie's deck, but maybe I'll have to put it in a little spot for her. So moving along, this is the Soul Cats Tarot. And this one is also decently new to me. Where I feel like I've not gotten to work with it all too much. And this felt like a almost replacement, I guess, for the cat tarot for me. Where once I realized that it just that deck is gonna it's gonna work for Stevie and that's kinda it. I thought this one could be one that I could use for myself. And I do, I do like it, but I'm a bit torn. I'm a bit torn about it. I think we're gonna leave this one out and come back to it when I get to the, what did I call it, mystical nature tarot because I, have had a thought that I do wonder, even though this one is purely cat themed, if it's going to compete with my Enchanted Forest Harrow. I think they kind of feel the same to me, but I'm not sure. I might need to see them side by side. I don't know. I kind of feel like they might. So we're going to set this one aside for when we get to that and we can compare them. So this is the Soul Cats Tarot and this one might be... He might be in timeout. We're gonna have to see. So my last animal tarot is the oak, ash, and thorn. And this one I love. I couldn't tell you why it feels, oops, why it feels so different to me from the northern animal. Because really, you'd think they'd be the same, but I think because these animals are a bit more... They're not anthropomorphic, so they, they look genuinely like animals. I think that's why it feels different, and I just, I love the images of this one. The artwork is amazing. And I almost feel like, going back to the soul cats, I feel like the reason I'm feeling attached to it is because it's... Adam's, Adam Oler's artwork, who does these decks as well. But really, you know, I, I have, I have Oak, Ash, and Thorn, and Smoke, Ash, and Embers, so do I really need to hold on to something just because it's his artwork? I don't really think so. Oh, another thing when we get to that mystical nature category I might be doing something a little blasphemous I kind of want to compare oak ash and thorn with smoke ash and ember because even though one is animal and the other is dragon I think because of the artwork being slightly similar I feel like I get the same feeling from them and actually now that I I say that out loud I know that this is one I sit in front of and I feel like I'm choosing between them. I think they give me the same feeling. So, oh, that's going to be a tough one. Okay, so we're going to set the Oak, Ash, and Thorn is staying. If I was, if I had to pick one, I know it would be the Oak, Ash, and Thorn because Dragon energy is not necessarily something I connect to. So, all right, we're going to set this one aside so that we can go back to it later when we get to the smoke, ash, and embers because, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm saying that. I did not expect that, but that feels kind of like the case that I think I'm going to have to compare them. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, let's move on to the animal oracles. 
All right, we're gonna start with our Prairie Majesty, which is right up there with my Northern Animal Tarot. This one is never going anywhere. It's my favorite Oracle deck. It's just, uh, it's so multi-purpose. It always gives the best readings. I'm not gonna spend much time on this one, but I just wanted to show it. Cause I think this kind of doubles as a collection video in a way, but this one is not going anywhere, nor do I want anything competing with it. <laughs> so this is the Prairie Majesty Oracle. Next, we're gonna look at the, this is my combined illuminated bestiary and herbiary. So it's kind of that mega deck. Just not with the crystals, cause I don't know. I'm not a huge, huge, I do like crystals, but for cards, I guess, it's not really my thing. <sighs> so this one, they're all flipped around. This is one that it's a bit newer to me and I've not really worked too much with yet. But I really like, I love the images. They're so beautiful. And the keywords are really great. So I was kind of wondering if I felt a little bit like this might be competing with Prairie Majesty, but I don't think so. I think it is just different enough where I can keep both because I do really like both. And again, I'm not here to force myself to get rid of anything. You know, if I feel attached to it, that's fine. We can hold on to it. I'm just trying to be a little bit discerning and look into why, you know, I'm attached to things where, you know, with the Forest Envy Tarot, I think it's I really don't I don't know what the attachment is. I think I just like the pink. <laughs> That sounds so bad. Oh my gosh. I think it's a beautiful deck, but I really don't go towards that one. Where this one, I don't know that I've had long enough to make a call like that. And it does lean a bit more into the art style I generally like. So this one, this one is staying. Now, my next one is the Oracle of the Strange Forest. And I've held on to this one for so long. Every time I do a clean out, I look at this one and I consider rehoming it and then I don't. And I just don't really know why. I love the style and I love that it includes some cryptids. I think that's really fun. Oh, but there's no keywords on them. And they honestly don't really go with any of the decks that I currently have. Nor do I think I would re really be drawn to this art style if I saw it again. <sighs> yeah, I don't think this one is it. And I think I was holding on to it. Oh, I love the possum. I think I was holding on to it because I liked that it included those, see, yeah, these cryptids, but there is an oracle coming out that I've been following along with the little cryptid oracle that has the cutest images of cryptids that is a bit more my style and it has keywords and I think that makes a big difference. Okay, I think this one can definitely go. I don't, I don't need to talk myself into keeping it again because I, I do not use this one. I think I was kind of thinking like, oh, maybe I just use it seasonally in the summer, but I don't know if I really want to. I have two seasonal decks and I think that's kind of where I want to leave it. So this next is my grandmother's oracle. This one is definitely staying as well. I really feel attached to this one. Oh, it's just so beautiful. And I love the keywords on this. The guidebook is really great. It's a photography deck, but you know, it's mostly, it's pretty much all nature. So 
I love this one. And my question is, I actually think we're going to include the mystical nature category in this because I feel like this one might need to go head to head a little bit with my goddess love oracle. Because even though that's technically a goddess deck, it gives me real grandmother comforting energy, which I think is the same for this deck. This one is really a comforting one, and I know having... I don't tend to feel like I need comforting decks a lot, but I love having them for when I do. And this is the one I go for. I don't really know that I need more than one. And I think I like this one because while it is comforting, it still does give really solid advice. <sighs> so I think this one's going to have to go head to head as well. And that might have actually been... I think that was my last Animal Oracle deck. So I think, yeah, you know what? We've got time. We're going to go into the mystical nature category. All right, so we're just going to start off with my trimmed version of the Tarot of the Gnomes. Now, this is one that I was not reaching for because of the borders. So I realized that I was flipping the cards super weird before. I had them, the big pile upside down. And anyhow, so I wasn't using this before because of the borders. And I've had it for a bit now. So it's kind of this thing where I have this feeling of like, oh, I don't use it, but I just trimmed it maybe like a week and a half ago and have used it since then. I do think I really like it a lot better having it trimmed. So this one is definitely staying because it needs to get more of a chance as the new deck it is. <laughs> and I do really, I love having it as just the images. I think it I think it's just works a lot better with that for me anyway without the borders so that one stays I have to make a bag for it it's just loose right now <laughs> um let's do this one this is the oh my gosh what was this called wisdom of the fairies oracle and this one is also see I'm doing it weird again oh no that was right okay um so I've not gotten to really use this one a whole bunch yet, but the few times I have, I've really enjoyed it. Um, the keywords aren't really keywords. They're kind of a title and then you have to read the book. So that's, you know, is what it is. So I, I don't know exactly how I feel about that yet. But again, I kind of need to use this one a bit more. And I didn't really have any oracles that were fairy themed but I do have a few fairy decks and especially in the spring and summer I do really like using decks like that so I wanted to have an oracle that went with it and I do think this one is gonna work really well but we'll see so that's the fairy wisdom oracle and we're gonna we have to give this one more of a chance before we can make any sort of call on that Okay, so next let's do, we've got the three in here that are kind of in question. So let's just do the last two that I know are going to be safe, and it's the Forest Fae deck. This is one that Rachel gave to me because it wasn't really working for her, and I've not tried it at all yet, so we're going to have to see. I like, I flipping through it, I do like the images, and I like that we get the sentence right on the cards. That is what I really like about these little mini decks. But we're going to have to see if I feel like I need two of them, because now I've got the Forest Fae and the Woodland Whispers, which also feel very, you know, similarly themed. But I've not gotten to try this one yet, and I do like my Woodland Whispers, so this has to get more of a chance. My other one from Rachel is the Angels and Ancestors deck, which this one I'm super excited about. 
I've already had really amazing readings with this. Also, the cardstock is amazing on this deck. Can we talk about that? I don't know why I just didn't expect it, but it's this amazing, like, thick, thicker matte cardstock. The images are beautiful. It's so different from anything else I have. I didn't buy it myself for so long because of the realistic looking people in it. That's always scary to me for some reason. <laughs> but I find that I really, I it ended up that I don't mind it when I'm using it. So this is just really a cool one. And for sure very different from what I have. And I think it will work really well with my animal decks and has, you know, as I've used it so far. So this one definitely stays. All right, now our next three are the ones that are kind of going head to head a little bit, we could say. <laughs> so, oh, I don't even know what I want to start with. I think we are going to start with Soul Cats and, oh my goodness, these are such slidey decks. The, the Llewellyn, Llewellyn deck, oh my gosh. I always say Llewellyn. Llewellyn decks are very slidey, but I actually really like the cardstock of them. Also the smell. Does anyone else just sniff their decks sometimes? <laughs> because I definitely do. And the Llewellyn cardstock has the best smell. That's my bold statement of the day. All right. Do these feel similar to me? Oh, I don't know. Yes and no. I'm going to have to be annoying about it. It's yes and no. I do wonder if these would work well if I use them together though that could be pretty interesting I think but I do think they have a similar theme and I can see myself kind you know having to choose between these two But, oh, I don't know. This is hard. They definitely are kind of similar. Mm. I think... I don't think I'm ready to let the soul cats go yet. I know if I had to choose one or the other, it's going to be Enchanted Forest as of now. But I don't think I'm quite at letting this one go. I actually am interested to try them out together. I think, I think that would be really interesting. And my hesitation to let this one go is because it does have that little bit of cat energy and I feel like I can use it. So if I wanted to do readings using that sort of energy while I have the cat tarot, that just doesn't feel like an option. So the question is, do I really need to have the cat energy when my house is probably just riddled with it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, next one. Oh, okay, I think we just need to get this one out of the way. I I feel nervous. Why do I feel nervous? Ah, we've got our smoke, ash, and embers. And we're going to bring on back oak, ash, and thorn. Man. <sighs> Th 
these feel really similar. They really do, don't they? I mean, look at these two SEM cards. Both that, you know, breaking in of light when it's cloudy. Dang it. <laughs> I love both. I really, really do. But they do feel similar. I had this realization today because I was talking to my friend Jen at work who has just been fawning over these decks forever now and keeps saying like she wants to get both and that she's you know waiting so that she can get both and it just instantly came out of my mouth of like I don't think you need both and then it, I was just like oh my gosh no you don't I don't think you need both <laughs> I don't need both and I have both so Yeah, I don't think you need both. I don't think I need both. Darn it. Because I do love them. I have like kind of, I think I just have an attachment to the world that it builds. But I know I choose between the two. I know they give me the same feeling. Plus, it's funny because in that conversation, when I said, just get one, Jen was like, oh, okay, if I'm going to get one, it's going to be the dragons. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so funny because I feel like if I picked one, it'd be 100% Oak, Ash, and Thorn. So I think, I feel like my dragons would find a really good home with her. So I feel like that might be what we have to do. Because I ha I it's you know for me it's the oak ash and thorn that's it. that's the one that works that's the one I feel connected to. Okay, okay. I think I've talked myself into that. I just you know do you ever like sit in front of your decks you know if you're someone who kind of tends to have a variety likes to collect a little bit and just. Feel like you have to decide like you you want this certain feeling and now I, I'm stressed because I have to choose that's the feeling I get and yeah I don't know I have this thing where I'm like that doesn't feel fair to my decks <laughs> I want them to have a home world they'll you know always be chosen <laughs> that sounds so cheesy oh my gosh Anyway, that's that. That's the decision of the day. That was hard. Oh my gosh. What a realization. All right, last head to head. We've got, where'd the other one go? Where did I put the, oh. The Grandmother's Oracle and the Goddess Love Deck. Our last kind of head-to-head -head here. Oh, they're very different. They are very different. And Wendy Andrews is one is probably my favorite artist. I just I love her work. I love her goddess pictures and I feel like half the reason I want to keep this is just because I love these images but in reality I can just get some prints of the goddesses I work with and you know go in that direction instead because I feel like I'm always going to choose my grandmother's oracle when I'm looking for that comforting deck Yeah, I really just don't, I don't reach for the goddess one. I really don't. As much as I love looking at the artwork and flipping through it, I don't read with it. Oh, and I feel like someone else would really like this. Okay, okay. I think the decision is made. We're not doing so bad as much as I'm complaining. 
we're doing a pretty good job. Not that getting rid of decks is a good job necessarily, but I mean, personally, you know, for myself, I knew there was some of these decks that had to be chosen between because I was feeling stressed when I had to choose one or the other because I knew they gave the same kind of feeling. Anyhow, I think we are going to pause this here and we're going to come back in another video probably to do our nature decks at least maybe throw in we might do nature and the two water decks i have i think that's what we're gonna do next time anyways i hope you enjoyed this sort of rambling video hopefully i didn't whine too much about having to oh no choose between my decks <laughs> But I'm having a lot of fun hanging out with you all and talking this through. It's really helpful. So I hope you enjoy listening and have a wonderful rest of your day.